Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and today I'm at one of New England's last remaining original roadside attractions. This is Santa's Land USA in Putney, Vermont. Now, please join me today as I do a full tour of the park with my mom, brother, and nephew. Santa's Land first opened in 1957 and was founded by a pioneering New York radio and television engineer, Jack Popelli. As the name suggests, Santa's Land is a theme park slash roadside attraction based around Christmas and Santa Claus. Today, entering the park, you truly get the feeling like you've stepped back in time as much of what is at the park today was here in some form on opening day. Hi. Good. Hey, Santa. Hi. Good to see you. So as you can see, when you first enter Santa's Land, you're in the gift shop. And don't worry though, I'll take a much closer look at the gift shop on my way out. And then this hallway here takes you into the park itself. And I think this is really amazing. I like all the Christmas trees and especially the blue LED lights. It really gives you the feeling like you're being transported into Santa's Land. It does a very good job setting the mood. And then coming up on the left here is the first set of animatronics. I'm not sure if these are original to the park or not, but they're definitely old. Yep. Oh, that's Don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. Thanks. Assumption of risk. Assumption of risk. Can we do the train thing? Yeah, we will. Oh, here's a little map of what we have. I don't know. We'll call it Tommy with the camera. No running. No smoking, Nate. Yeah. Put the cigarette out, Nate, would you? Yeah. Oh, it shows if we go, number two is the covered bridge, so I guess we go this way. This way? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. From what I've read, Santa's Land was fairly successful during its early days and continued to be a success after it was sold by Mr. Popelli to the Brewer family in 1970 and up until the Brewer sold the park in 1998. However, not long after that is when it seems that the park really started to struggle. Oh, see that little elf down there? Yes, I did I've see seen that elf. one at different um, amusement parks, old parks like this. Really? Yeah, that exact one actually. Yeah, if you're aware of the Carpetbaggers channel, I'm actually uh, thinking of the elf that he owns, which looks almost exactly like that, I believe. Coming up is Sweetheart Bridge and Santa's Mill. And these look almost identical to the way they did on opening day. And here's no, a picture of what they actually looked like back in 1957. What do you mix in there? Yeah, where's the water coming from? There's the slide. As I was saying, the park had some struggles back in the early 2000s, and in 2003 there were actually plans to demolish the park and replace it with a Wild West attraction. Luckily that never happened, but due to the waning popularity of theme parks like this that don't have high-tech thrill rides and the financial crisis of the late 2000s, the owner of the park at that time, Lisa Wells, decided that she had to close the park. Santa's Land initially closed in December of 2011 and was closed the entire 2012 season as far as I know. The park was temporarily saved though when it was bought by Lillian Billowitz in 2013. But a year later, she had to file for bankruptcy and close the park seemingly forever at this time, when authorities found 16 dead reindeer and numerous severely malnourished donkeys, ponies, and goats. 
Over the next few years, Santa's land was left essentially abandoned, and not surprisingly, the park was heavily vandalized during that time and was literally falling apart. Luckily, however, this would only last a few years. In 2017, David Haversat, a fan of Santa's Land since he was a child, bought the park, restored it, and reopened it to the public. Over the years since then, he's continued to renovate and improve the park by fixing the damage caused by the vandals and adding additional rides and displays. It's still a work in progress, but I would say the results so far have been pretty amazing. Oh, it's a Yeti. Christmas Yeti. This is called the Igloo because it looks like an igloo to most people. To me though, it looks like Luke Skywalker's house in Star Wars. Or Abominable Snowman, I guess. This is Santa's Deersmith shop, and I believe that is the original train from the park. Not sure if it was here opening day, but it was definitely here back in the 60s and 70s. Here's a picture of it back when it was still in operation. This is another one of the rarely seen Arctic elephants. They are only found at the North Pole, believe it or not. So now let's head on up to the big slide and the train station. Originally, in addition to what's here today, as I mentioned earlier, the park also featured live animals such as deer, reindeer, birds, and even monkeys, which I believe were kept in this cage here. Um, there aren't any live animals at Santa's Land today other than squirrels, but hopefully someday that may change, possibly. Fingers crossed. There's the train station. And now let's take a ride down the big red slide. Which aisle, Tommy? This is a fast one. You is sure it? you're ready? I hope so. All right. <laughs> hey, you got middle. I'm doing that. Just keep your feet on the thing, Tommy. Oh. Maverick! Oh, yeah. Maverick! Thank you. Ready, Nate? One, oh, two. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Just keep going back for it. There we go. Good job, bud. One, two, go three. Go, Nate. Go. Go let Tommy win. Go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Oh! Nice one, Nate. I'm catching. I'm catching. Yes. Oh, there's the train set we heard about. No, like Those things are so satisfying. It is. It's a very sweet picture. They had this cool uh, train layout here, but it looks like it derailed, and sadly, I don't see any way to get back there to fix it other than pulling these tables away, which I got to imagine is a bit of a pain. Because seriously, look at the derailment. You have to pull this one back to reach in there. Oh, gosh. The derailed going into the mountain. Oh, got the Amtrak up there, Nate? You guys see the blimp? Push the button. Oh, there they go. They get to work. Oh, cute. Yeah, the other guys are on break. It's a 19. Some sort of wooden toy. 
I suppose. Right, let's see what we got over here. Looks like it was a little train set up for kids, but... Yeah, this isn't the full-size one. Looks like a derailment back there. No, the full-size is over here. You can see the tracks are a bit... Oh, they used to have pheasants out back there. It says pheasant's pen. Oh, yes. My only disappointment was that the train wasn't running. However, I was told by an employee that they did hope oh, yeah. to get the train up and running again for the 2024 season, so hopefully that'll happen. We saw the original train earlier, but I assume the current train is somewhere in storage. The current train was built in 1976 by C.P. Huntington and originally ran at Boblo Island or Boblo Island in the Detroit River from 1976 to 1992, was then purchased by Six Flags St. Louis, and then finally came to Santa's Land in 2006. One of the major changes at the park since it reopened is the addition of three amusement park style rides. One of them is that carousel there, there's a car ride behind it, and then at the other end of the park there's a fun house, and we'll take a look at all three of them. As I said, the restoration of this park is a work in progress, and not all of it has been restored. So if you look back here, there's a few houses and little buildings scattered, mostly around the edges of the park, that have just been left as they were probably since 2013 or 2014, I'm guessing. And you can't access them. Um, but it's fun to take a look at them. And this one, luckily, I was able to stick my camera in here, even though you're not allowed to physically enter the building. It looks like they're just using it for some storage. This carousel was originally at Coney Island's Astroland. Yeah. I'm not sure when it was there though. Um, I did some research online and I was not able to find any photos of that specific carousel at Astroland. So if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Here's a fun little car ride called Central Park, and uh, let's take a ride. Hi. How are you? Good. Can I get my own car? I'm going to bring Uncle cool. Tommy. Yeah. You guys ready? Yep. Here we go. Part of the fun of this ride for me was getting a closer look at some of these uh, abandoned structures back here, especially this giant castle. It looks too small to have been um, something you could go inside, but I'm not sure. And there's what looks like a bridge back there, and there's some other structures in the back that you can barely see. So hopefully someday they'll restore those as well, especially that castle. That looks like, you know, too good to not restore. Here's another one of the cages from when the park used to have animals on display. And hopefully if they ever do bring animals back to the park, they have them more free-ranging rather than in cages, ideally. Hey, thanks. Have a great weekend. You too. Now let's take a ride on the carousel. 
And just so you know, these horses have a 150 pound weight limit. So most adults are probably not going to be able to ride the actual horses. I've actually never run across a carousel People before with a weight limit that low yeah. before. Um, so me and my brother had to ride in the chairs, which I've never rode in the chairs before on a carousel. gets going. It's motoring. It's slightly motion signal. Yeah. A little bit. It, yeah. I think it's because it's, it's so small. Tight radius. Yeah. Then we'll get something out in the distance. Thanks. I gotta go in Santa's workshop or whatever this is. According to the map of Santa's land, this is actually Santa's house, not his workshop. You don't like this play? Looks like it. I'm coming in. Somebody's calling Santa. Pick up the phone. Santa's sleeping back there. Oh. Rex. He's got his brain. I guess it's like Donner and Blitzen, etc. Copyrighted? Yeah. While most of Santa's land is focused on Santa himself and the fun aspects of Christmas, um, they also do have an actual chapel here with a nativity scene. favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and give him the name of Jesus. Then to be jolly, yes. Stop chewing your cut though. Yeah, it is. Look at that Next up we have Santa's sweet shop. The Lolly Palooza 2000. <laughs> it's kind of like something out of uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to take the guy out there. They've also got a snack shop where they do sell things like hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheese dog. Cheese dog. Mozzarella. I know people are going to say you don't put ketchup on a hot dog, but I like both ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. 
four. Number no. 15. What number are you? 18. 18. I might have answered. Hello. Um, Thank, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh. We'll keep it just this area here. I think that's about the only. Now let's head into Bear Mountain, which I think is actually one of the better displays at the park. You can see them inside there. Here's the schoolhouse where you can write letters to Santa. Letters to Santa. Here's some photos of what this part of the park used to look like when it was abandoned between about 2013 and 2017.
And of course I had to take a look behind the fence to see if they're hiding anything back there. Sadly, there's not too much back there. I think that building is actually still in operation. Not sure what they do in there, but there are cars parked in front of it, so I'm guessing there's something inside there. This statue of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is enormous. I would guess he's probably at least at least 10, 12 feet tall. And I'm not sure, but I think this is probably original to the park. Or if it's not original, it's very, very old. All right, so now let's head up to the last part of the park we haven't been to yet. And this is where they have the fun house and the mini golf. Can we do the nice We're going to play a quick round. This funhouse is pretty cool. It's definitely vintage. Uh, it's got a lot of potential, but as you'll see, a lot of it is not working. Like those planks on the ground are not moving. And there weren't really any sound effects playing. Uh, this little spinny thing here wasn't moving for me. And this didn't make any sound. I'm pretty sure that would have buzzed and lit up probably. I'm not sure how old this funhouse is, but I would guess it's got to be at least from the 70s. Now let's do a quick game of mini golf here. Um, this golf course, I don't think this is original to the park. I would say it's definitely old, but I don't think it's 1957 old. Uh, if I'm wrong about that, you know, somebody let me know in the comments. Okay. Oh. Hey, boy, not that. That's a two. Well, let's see if I can do it. In, uh, two or left, Good job. Good one, guys. All right. Well, that's pretty much everything there is to see outside at Santa's Land. Uh, but before we go, stay with me. I'm going to do a walk around of the gift shop, and we'll see what they've got for sale. And then we'll head on out. Exit the gift shop. It's kind of psychedelic. <laughs> Before I left, I did want to get some souvenirs that said Santa's Land on them. So the first thing I looked at were these postcards here. A few of them seem to be homemade, like they were printed out on inkjet printers. 
Um, but some of them were a bit higher quality, and I did take another look at some additional postcards in just a minute, so stay tuned for that. They've also got a lot of toys for sale here. Not all of it's Christmas related, but as you can see, there's a lot of Christmas related stuff here. So if you're looking for Christmas decorations or display items or just anything related to Christmas, you can definitely find it here. And you can actually access this gift shop without buying a ticket. So if you're in the area and you just want to go shopping and not actually pay the admission fee, you can do that too. Oh yeah, I was never able to do that. And then light shines right on them. I thought these were cool. These are Santa's Land magnets. And I actually ended up uh, picking up a couple of these. That one's five bucks. I got that one. And I also got the reindeer one. And I also picked up some official Santa's Land postcards. Today this gift shop is really nice, it's really well maintained, but here's a picture of what it looked like during the time frame of about 2014 to 2017 when it was abandoned. You can see it was heavily vandalized and they had to do a lot of restoration work in here, I'm sure. Hi. Alright, 1164. Okay. Yep. Did you have a good time out there, sir? Yes, I did. Great. Great. Um, oh, is this thing not working? No, right down here. Oh. Ooh, and then I have my... No, no, no. That's I mean, not money. No, no. Oh, you've got enough. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Do you know receipt? Uh, no. It's fine. Alright. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Thank you. There you have it. That's Santa's Land USA in Putney, Vermont. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I've got a lot more videos coming up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.